those things. So um, we're well on our way, and I think you've been doing a fine job. This is, uh, yeah, give yourselves a hand. Um, with us tonight, we have Drew from Ferry Beach Ecology School. There is a small piece of paper being passed out that he brought that gives a little bit of bullet points about Ferry Beach and then the schedule on the back. And from here on out, I'll turn him, turn the mic over to him so he can give you a little presentation. And I notice a lot of you have your packets with you. There are extras down there if you forgot them. We thought we'd try to make it easy. So if you had questions about the forms, you could get them taken care of tonight and leave everything um, here before you go so it's all taken care of. Here you go. Great. Thank you, Principal Arnold. Thank you all. It's great parents and students. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lead you through what the three-day program is going to be like. Um, currently, we're working with several other middle schools doing the same model, working with the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. I'm going to go into a little detail on that. We're working also with the Bonnie Eagle School and Lincoln Middle School. So we think it's a great way to have middle school students and their teachers uh, learn about environmental science. So the program that we're doing with Lake, uh, excuse me, with Lake Region Middle School is called Science and Ecology Live and Plug the Seawood Loop Program. It's an environmental literacy program. And we're collaborating with the teachers here and the students to create a three-year program. A little bit about Fairy Beach Ecology School. We're a nonprofit, nonprofit uh, educational organization. We offer field trips, residential programs, publication. Our focus is to help create uh, stewardship through the earth through the environmental science and sustainability. Um, here's some of our in-school programs. We do family camps, publications. I encourage you after the presentation, if you want to check out some of our publications, they're up at the uh, table. Um, so basically, let me go into the CELU program, what we're doing. We have, basically, we're going to be doing uh, programs for the sixth grade here at the school. Also, this Wednesday, we're going to be having a workshop all the teachers to talk about the program and brainstorm. The seventh grade is going to be spending a full day, um, Veterans Day week, they're going to come down for a full day at Ferry Beach, and then the eighth grade, you eighth grade students get to spend three days at Ferry Beach, Wednesday, November 16th through Friday, November 18th. So there's a picture of the sixth grade, basically we're going to focus on using your school grounds to learn about science. Seventh grade, oops, I skipped ahead. Seventh grade is going to be learning about ecology at Ferry Beach. And these are some of the, the Ferry Beach campus, I'll go into that more in a little bit, has a lot of different ecosystems. And then there's the eighth grade trip, which I'm going to focus on tonight. Living on site, taking meals together, and doing lessons. Um, and we're able to fund this. The majority of this is being funded through a $16,000 grant from the Elms Collaborative and $10,000 from our program fund. So a huge chunk of this is being funded through grant programming. And the Elms Collaborative, we've actually teamed up with Brian Pond, Chuanke, and Tanglewood to help provide scholarships for Maine schools, like the Lake, Lake Region Middle School that haven't had the chance to do uh, residential environmental science programs before. So, let me get into the nitty gritty of the three-day program. You're going to be traveling. We're about an hour from uh, your campus here. Um, this is our campus right on the Atlantic Ocean. We're right south of Portland, north of Kennebunk Port in the town of Saco, Maine. And actually, uh, some of you are familiar with Scarborough and Orchard Beach. That's the uh, busy end of Saco Bay in the summer. We're actually on the southern end, the quiet end, right north of Camp Ellis. But this is our campus, the dormitories and the uh, dining hall right out in the ocean. So it makes it an ideal place, really a beautiful place to study science. So you'll be arriving, the buses will pull in. Uh, you'll have about an hour on the bus, pull up to Ferry Beach, and you'll be greeted by our teachers. We call them the naturalists. That's what we call our teachers at Ferry Beach. They'll be meeting you. The students, you'll be unloading, moving into your dorms, uh, finding out your dorm assignments, uh, rules of conduct for the dorms, daily schedule, and then we end up with a fire drill. At the same time, the classroom teachers and chaperones are going to be meeting with um, Alex Grindle, who's our residential director, to go over the curriculum for the three-day stay. Uh, depending on um, how they do housing assignments, probably the guys are going to end up in the biggest dorm, Roland, and then the girls will end up in Quillen and Underwood, the two smaller dorms. Um, a couple things I want to emphasize, even though you're studying nature, these are pretty cushy. We have hot water, 
We have electricity, we have a roof. I have to say, I do these presentations and people think it's rough and it's actually they're quite nice, the dormitories. And what the teachers are going to be working on, um, you're going to have uh, students who have a dorm group, um, a study group, you go up on lessons, and a dining table group. So it's a way for the teachers to mix you up into different groups. Um, at the end of each hallway are the teacher rooms for supervision. Um, a couple things I want to stress for the adults, it's 24-hour adult supervision. We have a 10 to 1 uh, student-to-staff ratio on our staff. The teachers are going to be, the school's going to be bringing that same 10 to 1 ratio, so it's actually a 5 to 1 student-to-staff ratio. We do have a nurse, uh, a registered nurse, Diane LaPointe, on staff. She's going to be handing out, if any of you students take mealtime or bedtime meds, she's the one who's going to be handing those out. Um, the rooms, depending on which room a dorm you're assigned to, uh, two to six per room, the bunk beds, um, are natural, so we do what put the bed was basically, a lot of them are great guitarists, uh, might sing a couple songs, uh, so much storytellers, but getting you guys settled in, um, and then, then uh, teachers are with, um, and actually we extend that lights out, actually, for uh, eighth graders, is usually around 9.30. Um, meal time, we do family style meals, which means about eight um, of you at a room, at a table with the teachers. And uh, you're going to take turns being either set up, clean up, sweeping in the dining hall. Um, a lot of the food you can see right there, they're having pizza. Food is definitely going to be stuff uh, you'll like spaghetti, pizza. Um, we usually have two course uh, breakfast, three course dinner. Um, we also put out a snack cart during the day, so uh, if you're feeling hungry in between, you can grab apples, oranges, bananas. Moving on to the lesson, the great thing when we met with the teachers about doing this new program, definitely you can learn a certain amount of science in the classroom, but what we're going to provide is exploration, discovery, sensory awareness, getting you guys outside for three days of learning and exploration. This is the typical schedule, actually on those half sheets that the parents have, is the schedule. Um, I won't go into too much detail on it. Basically, we go after uh, students and teachers are up. We have a, a breakfast, two-hour morning lesson, uh, lunch, two-hour afternoon lesson, dinner, and then an hour and a half uh, evening lesson. And in between that, there's shorter break times for dorm time and for uh, team times. So often, the teachers will use part of that bigger break before dinner to have team times to meet with their students after the afternoon lesson. So you can see from the schedule, we're really going to be packing it in. And the nice thing about Ferry Beach is our location. I mentioned earlier, we have eight different ecosystems within walking distance. So when you're stepping out of your dorm where you're living for that three-day program, you're going right to the forest, to the beach, to the salt marsh. This is where your classrooms are going to be. And more ecosystems. So sand beach, salt marsh, Tupelo Swamp, the Saco River Jetty. And the way we're going to be teaching about ecology, we have what we call ABCs of ecology. Basically, four uh, basic concepts. Abiotic would be your climate, geology, biotic are your living things, cycles, the tidal cycle, soil cycle, water cycle, and change. And the right thing with the three day program, it may be nice one day, sunny, it may be rainy, even snowy on another day. That's all part of uh, studying nature. The tide comes in, next six hours the tide goes out. That's all part of what you're going to be learning during your three days at Ferry Beach. Um, so, since we're teaching the ABCs of college, really what we're doing is learning how to read the landscape. Viewing nature as incredible stories that you can learn to read. And at the same time, we're doing environmental literacy. We are helping Lake Region Middle School meet the main uh, science standards. And not only science, we've met very, uh, when we're meeting with the teachers, we're designing curriculum that also teaches English, literacy, math, social sciences, so teaching across the spectrum. I'm going to go into the lesson topics a little bit. The top, you have the topic, beach and dunes in this case, and then this would be a lesson of uh, beach scavenging. It might be an activity we do or learning about dune preservation. At the salt marsh, coastal watershed mapping, uh, trapping mochuk fish in the salt marsh. Um, forest and fresh water, uh, nutrient cycle, wild edibles, basically it doesn't matter what ecosystem we're going to, we're keeping you busy, having fun, but learning science at the same time. 
abiotic adventures. That's a focus on climate and geology. Camp Ellis, that's our fishing village right to the south of us. Definitely beautiful fishing village with a lot of lobster boats, but it has been experiencing erosion over the years. And that's actually one of the topics you'll be learning about is the erosion problem and what to do about it. Nature at night, we're actually going to go back to where you were during the day, the forest, the beach, to learn about the night shift, whether it's animals like brown bat, great horned owl. That glowing thing right there is actually a blown up version of some plankton we get at the beach, dinoflagellates, and they're bioluminescent. Doesn't happen every night hike, but sometimes you can scrape the sand during a night hike and the sand will glow, which is an incredible effect. Um, astronomy, if it's clear out, we'll definitely be putting out the telescopes, taking a look at the planets that are out, the moon, uh, constellation. Um, so that's a cool thing because the beach where we're at is very open uh, skyline for viewing. Marine lab, that's going to be a kind of indoor activity, getting ready to go to the tide pool. And um, often one of the favorite lessons for students, we are going to bus you off-site. The one time we go off-site, we're going to go to the tide pools at Bitterford. Um, actually, that's a student looking at the Wood Island Lighthouse. The Bitterford Tide Pools, so when you think of tide pools, they're kind of like nature's aquarium. On Rocky Shore, when the tide goes out, you're going to have these water uh, depressions filled with uh, lobster, crabs, sea stars, sea urchins, uh, eels, a whole cool assortment of uh, critters. And then connections, our topic, and actually every lesson we do, we want what you're learning at Ferry Beach to take back here to the Lake Region area for science class, for other classes. Um, so taking what you learn and applying to things like green building, to food systems, and the cool thing about working with you guys, we're very psyched about some of the food, the gardening you're already doing. You've got that big grant where you've been trying to connect your uh, cafeteria to local food systems. That's something that's very important to us too. So we're actually, one lesson is going to focus on food, not only food in the garden, but how a forest provides food to other animals, so kind of a food systems lesson. And this all goes back to skills that you can use when you come back here to community in your own life. We've had uh, classes go back and start organic gardens, um, backyard ecology. We had a student, another eighth grader, a few years ago, uh, vacation down in Florida, and she was psyched because she had used the ABCs of ecology in the Everglades, a totally new ecosystem. Um, in fact, um, one of our naturalists, Krista, she's our head naturalist, came to Ferry Beach as an eighth grade student. And she loved it so much being outside, being a scientist, she went and got her degree in science education and now is our program naturalist. There's still going to be time to relax in between lesson and meal time. Um, dorm time, uh, take a shower, write a letter home. Um, we definitely have some nice rec fields, volleyball court, basketball court. Some students like to go back down to the beach. Um, of course, in November, you're not going to want to go swimming. We don't go in the water. We're near the water, but we won't be going in the water. Once again, uh, parents, uh, it's mandatory adult supervision. The students are with the, uh, our staff and the teachers at all times. A little bit more about our staff. You've met me. I'm the executive director. Alex is the residential director. She'll be working closely with the teachers. Meg, the outreach director, is the one who's going to be doing a workshop with the teachers on Wednesday. She's also going to be working with the 6th and 7th grade on their field trips. John runs our garden program. Chris is that 8th grader I was telling you about. So it started as a student at Ferry Beach and now is on our staff. And Maureen is our associate director who writes grants, which is how we're able to pay for this program because we got some incredible grants. I already mentioned Diane. This is her cabin, our nurse, and then the Ferry Beach Naturals. So I have a teaching staff of 16 naturals, fantastic folks. Some of them have taught in the classroom at science centers. Of course, anytime, just like when your principal hires new people, they go through background checks. Same for us, anytime we have new staff, background checks, references. What I'm looking for when I hire new staff are just fantastic teachers who also know about environmental science. And our staff are also very entertaining. We like to have fun with um, what we're teaching. So we often we use IT. our staff know a lot of improv theater using humor. They kind of like Saturday Night Live, but focused on middle school science, and that's what we're like. Um, we're known to bring on a guitar, uh, sing a rock song, uh, do a skit, all in the interest of teaching complex, important science concepts, but having fun at the same time. Um, that includes dinner theater. So Wednesday night, Thursday night, while you guys are having dessert, we'll bring on a skit. We've in the past have used 
uh, characters like SpongeBob, where we totally make them up, new skits. It doesn't matter what we're doing, though. We're having fun um, and teaching science concepts. So you've got the packing list, right? They've got the packing list, so um, it's good to stick to that. Actually, the packing list, often people use that for five days. You may not need eight pairs of socks for a three-day program. You can cut it down to like six. The kids will actually go through a lot of pairs of socks on the uh, trip. Um, you're definitely going to want a rain jacket. We go out in the rain. We don't go out in unsafe weather, but if it's raining, put on the poncho, we'll go out. It doesn't need to be a fancy poncho, Gore-Tex jacket, LLB. Those uh, three-buck ponchos you get at Walmart or Target or Army-Navy surplus, those are fine uh, for going out in the rain. Uh, you're definitely going to want warm clothing, though. It doesn't have to be fancy. In fact, we encourage students when they're coming, you don't need anything new. Old tennis shoes are the perfect thing to wear when you're out on lesson at Ferry Beach. Every now and then a student will show up with new hiking boots, and all new hiking boots are going to give you its blisters. What you want to have is comfortable clothes that you don't mind getting wet and a little bit muddy or dirty because we're out in the forest, we're at the tide pools, we're at the salt marsh having fun out in nature. Um, we do have uh, a list of stuff that we don't want you to bring, like any kind of electronic game, uh, cell phones, things like that. They're just going to get lost, they might get broken. And then really the focus of our program is to get away from that electronic stuff. Focus on your friends, focus on teachers, being out in the environment. Um, the one electronic thing, if you have a nice camera and you want to bring it, that's fine, but a lot of students will bring the disposable type cameras if they want to take pictures. Um, and I know uh, the school has worked on a contract for both the students and parents to sign that kind of lays out some of those expectations. Because you're going to have a great time at Fairview Beach, but this is part of your school uh, curriculum. So it's not three days away from school, it's three days where school goes to the beach. And there's a big uh, difference between uh, school and just like a hanging out at the beach. So um, you're not going to need any money, but we do have souvenirs if you're interested. The field guide you use on lesson water bottles, organic kind of t-shirt. And actually, this is another way we raise money to provide scholarship for schools like yours. So if you are interested, we gave the order form to the teacher so you can order those ahead of time. And I end up my presentation with one more bonus of spending time at the beach and waking up in the morning. We get some pretty incredible sunrises over South Bay. And the thing is, your dorms are right on the ocean. So when you look out the window, you're looking out at um, Saco Bay, the Gulf of Maine, the Atlantic Ocean. So that's my uh, short presentation. I definitely encourage you, if you haven't checked out our website yet, you've got the web address on those half sheets and the other paperwork. It's the initials of Ferry Beach Ecology School. It's www.fbes.org. There's a parent web page, there's a student web page sample menus, pictures of the dorms, pictures of the campus, so I encourage you to go to that. Uh, at this point, I'd be happy to ask, or ask, you ask questions, I can answer them. We may have logistics questions of... Uh, With food allergies, and when you're going to put that on the health form, so we'll know about that. And we work with over 4,000 kids a year. And every week we've got kids who might have peanut allergies, lactose intolerance. So that's something, if you have any concerns, you can. I would ask that you wait the week before, but then you can give Alex, our residential program director, a call. But we're really good at working with kids who have food allergies and make sure. The, the, the um, menu is pretty varied, so kids always find enough to eat. Um, the teachers have cell phones, we have cell phones. I mean, the thing is, all these chaperones have cell phones. They have, we have a contact number, so there's no problem getting in touch with us. And of course, we have all you on your, on the permission form, we've got your cell phone, your work phone, your wife's work phone, your, you know, all that, so that's not a problem. The thing with cell phones, just like at school, and especially one of the main reasons, you know, we had an eighth grade student a couple years ago who wasn't feeling well and then she had swung with a cell phone rather than tell the nurse who we have on site and it's a great nurse she called her parents up with so you know you so you can see I mean the whole thing and this is a big step I'm a parent too like sending your kid away you know 
you want to know that they're being looked after. And I got to tell you, I'm already very impressed with the teaching team here and our nurses, great, and our staff are looking over your kids. So if you do need to get in contact with us, you definitely no problem doing that. so thorough that I've answered all the questions. Hey, at, at the end, it's sometimes people, either student or t uh, parents, want to ask questions afterwards, kind of one-on-one. -on -one. That's cool. Um, definitely uh, encourage you to check out our webpage. Oh, there is a question. Yeah, right there. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. If you, you don't all need to do that, because, you know, definitely you don't want to have wet hair uh, when it's cold out. The thing is, Teachers need to supervise, because you imagine if you plug in like eight hair dryers at once, you blow the fuses. So we don't mind a few hair dryers, but if that happens, we ask that the teachers supervise where that is, so they don't blow the fuses in the dorms. <laughs> and you're asking that question for someone else, right? It wasn't for you. Okay. Right. So some of us use hair dryers too, so I'll find out how many chaperones will be bringing a hair dryer and then let you know, okay? Right. Um, can I take this minute to have all the staff that are here um, kind of come out and wave hi so everyone can see you? Um, I just want to say the staff here has been incredible. They're really willing to step up and help, and this kind of thing is a big extra set of work for them, and they're all here tonight, so to see what you're seeing and to put your mind at ease and they're putting in all kinds of extra effort and helping with fundraising and being 24-7 with your kids for three days is a big job. We have 15 staff members who are willing to go 24-7 and five others who are coming just for the day. So there's a lot of them. Oh, there's no more questions. If I have a box down here where the pencils are. If you want to leave your packets, um, you may do that. If you still have questions and need to take them, that's fine. You can bring them back. Yeah, you have another question? Yeah. We have all the staff we need, so the only parents that are coming are um, one parent who already is fingerprinted, who runs a, a thing for us after school, and a school board, the school board chairperson. We had overwhelming support from staff, so there's no room for any parent chaperones. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. I'll turn this off, and if you want to ask us questions individually, that's fine.